Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. Cabby's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 432. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the Cabbie studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, friends. Um, we're starting our podcast with some sad news this morning. Uh, we had quite a tearful weekend. The, the son of the family that we've had you all praying for that had COVID, uh, he passed away. And the staff at the hospital said that they'd never seen anyone fight harder. And he was, he was quite a warrior in this situation. Uh, we had the privilege of meeting Austin. Excuse me just a second. What a kind and gentle young man he was. We just were so delighted to get to meet him and his family. They're just so precious to us. And uh, we know he's in the presence of Almighty God. He's meeting Jesus face to face. And so he's out of this uh, world and the condition that, he, that it's in. Uh, but we're so grieved for his family's loss. Yeah. And uh, they've been so thankful for all of your prayers. It's been so much to them to know that thousands were praying for their family. And uh, we know that you all have, have been so faithful to pray. We're so grateful for you guys. Uh, they're steadfast in their faith. And they are prayerfully taken each day at a time. And we ask you to continue to pray for Austin's family. I, they've experienced uh, this same COVID and uh, if, if you all have had it, I mean, I I know we had it. We had uh, some weeks of just you just lose your energy, and so when you have other things, I think there's different types of it. And I think when you have the the kind that really affects your lungs, it just is so hard to to uh, make it through this and have strength. And so if you would just continue to pray that God would comfort them and strengthen them, um, and continued healing and recovery. And uh, we're going to see Austin again. And that's the great hope that we have. You know, death isn't the end for us. And we're going to have a reunion. And uh, we just are thankful for you guys. We're so thankful yeah, we for are. everything that you've done. Uh, we have another prayer request um, from a young man named David, and he's been through quite the ordeal. Um, he believes he's uh, he's been targeted, and so he's it's very hard for him to have peace in, in that situation. And he's requested that we all pray that he would be able to hear the Lord's voice, and isn't that a wonderful request? Because, um, you know, a lot of people don't even think about that when they're in uh, those kind of, of situations, but... We just ask that, that God would speak to him, that he would attune David's ears to his voice, that he would be able to hear him clearly. Because, you know, if you hear the Lord's voice, he'll give you direction, and he'll, and he'll calm, calm you. You know, when you're in a, a certain situation, you feel like, boy, the attacks are coming. God can calm you in that, and we just ask that God's peace would just surround him. Uh, they uh, requested, his family's request in uh, prayer that the Lord's will be done. Mm. Uh, and that the Lord delivers David from these attacks. And they also request in, uh, protection for him, that we pray for protection. And we do that. Father, you are able to send your holy angels. You're yes. able to stop the enemy. Father, you can confuse them. You can confound them. You can um, put angels there that the, the enemy can see, that they would be so fearful they wouldn't even try to go toward David. And, and so if you would all just lift him up in prayers, we would appreciate it. I know his family would appreciate it, and we thank you for that. Uh, we had woke up to news this morning of a horrible thing that happened in Baltimore. Um, there was a, I guess it's a barge that crashed into it and just took the whole bridge down. I mean, this yeah, is a mile and a half bridge. Uh, there were cars on that bridge, and I someone said um, that there there were workers there. 
And so I, I, maybe they try to do something in the night, you know, when the traffic's slow. But anyway, they, they are in the process of trying to retrieve anyone that could have survived. You know, that's, that's one of the um, most difficult things is if you would fall in water, most of the vehicles might, you know, used to you could roll your window down. Now they have those vehicles that uh, they'd have to have something to break those windows out. And I know they said the water temperature was in the low 40s, and that I think you have about seven minutes before you start. Yeah. Uh, so if we just be praying for all the people that have been affected by this, pray for uh, Maryland. I mean, this is going to be quite a shock to their transportation, to their... Well, this, there, I mean, there's two major uh, two major highways going into the Baltimore area. Not only that, it's a, it's a corridor from, from, the e- from the northeast through. And one of the things that, that I'm kind of questioning, you know, if I was in the intelligence community, we've had food processing plants and uh, different things burn uh, in the last two, three years. I mean, it's just been one thing well, after another. Been a- a lot of them, and so so this <clears throat> creates a major choking point uh, to get anything, let's say that comes in the shipping lanes through Baltimore and all that to the rest of America, as well as getting things up there. And it, it seems to me like there has been a methodical, systematic attack on on transportation and food distribution in America that has stretched over the last four or five years. Well, you know, if you get on. Uh, if you look on the internet, you'll see different people that are giving their opinions. <clears throat> I don't know anything about engineering, but I just thought it was so odd that one barge could take an entire bridge out. Well, that that barge, when you look at it, it's like one of those ones that has the big shipping containers. So, I mean, it's probably, I don't know, half a million to a million metric tons of, of loading stuff. So would it have it. to hit at a certain point, you think? It had to hit a certain point. But I, uh, one of the things they mentioned in the news this morning was that even engineers was, were shocked that that hitting it where it did just collapse the entire thing. Well, I've, I've seen some things that, you know, there are already people giving opinions. Uh, some people are saying it's a black swan event that's supposed to affect more financially than anything else. Others are saying it, it was could be a cyber attack where the... Instruments went out on on the barge. Uh, I've well, had a lot of people. It was running dark, so saying so it had no power. Uh, other people are saying that there are so many safeguards in place in situations like that. They're they're just trying to determine what's going on. I've been concerned for a while, and I've I've mentioned this on the podcast about having you know preparing in case there are um, shortages because you can't get it transported. You know, they're going to go after bridges. They're going to go after um, anybody that's here that's that's an enemy to the United States. Is If they're here to, and are determined that they're going to take us down, they're, they're going to know where to hit. And so, you know, God can protect us from many things, but, but we can just, on the practical side of things, say, hey, if, if they do things that are going to disrupt um, – the food distribution and trucks and uh, things like that. And I, I already think that there are, th- are things that God's protected us from as far as, as airlines, but we've been praying over that for months. Uh, but but this is just a pr- not in fear because God's going to, can pr- you know, he can provide for his people even if it takes a miracle. Uh, but just to be, um, you know, have, have yeah. some extra because it would take a while. You know, the stores would be empty. If something like that happens, the stores will be empty in, uh, in a few hours. Well just, well, just look at just like with the upcoming eclipse we were reading about. Uh, last was the last eclipse we had. There was a little town that got inundated with people. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the sewer systems uh, quit working and the, the, the stores were empty of food. And I mean, about 13,000, there was like 40-something thousand people showed up. It is, the, the, it is so easy for our Walmart or whatever to get overwhelmed and food to disappear like this. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think it's wisdom. And, you know, and I, I was thinking about this this morning with this bridge. One of the ones I've been really concerned about are there, you know, there's like a dozen bridges that are main bridges that go across the Mississippi. I know whenever I go down to Cleveland, Tennessee, I go down to the foothill, and there's a couple of these rinky-dink bridges I go across. You just kind of hold your breath. and Okay, I'm going across this bridge, but it, they're not the big heavy-duty ones. That, Mary, if you took out those bridges, you would literally cut America in half as far as transportation. Well, there's bridges that we've seen them 
have to work on around here and the detours are sometimes are a bunch of miles you have to go and And so it's it's hard to we're so used to just constant uh transportation we aren't used to that um but it's it's a concern because the people that are coming against us are well trained they've been been training and planning on this for years and uh and they know what they're aiming for. They know what's going to cause disruption. And, you know, sometimes I look at uh, things like they've been talking in here in Missouri about, you know, repaving I-44. And they're going to do a $20 million study to figure out how to repave I-44. How many times have they repaved it? It's, it's like there's sometimes I think that the bureaucracy has everything so bogged down that it, it, it's like it's, it so increases the, um, the cost of doing something that it has gotten to where they, they can't keep up with. I mean, you know, I-44 is a major corridor. Uh, it should be one of the best paved highways in America. But yet people are, are dodging potholes to keep from running their cars. Well, we don't, as far as I know, we don't have a, any toll bridges here, do we, in Missouri? I know they do in Oklahoma, but I, I know there's none there's on I-44. One, there's one that goes across uh, from 70 over to Granite City. There's a toll bridge. But, I mean, they, they get a lot of money from those toll bridges going down through Oklahoma. And so, you know, we don't have any of that. So maybe they, they could put toll bridges up. Everybody probably wouldn't roads. like that. But, I mean, the, it's got to the point on I-44, you really have to watch it because there's some potholes so deep you'd ruin a tire in. Well, that happened right up in Rolla that mm-hmm. there was a big was. multi-car pileup because it was shattering tires. Right. And so uh, I, I have been concerned. When you look at just nationwide all the industries, there's a shortage of funds. Whether whether it's entertainment, uh, whether it's it's restocking things, it's it's this we we have all this stuff going on, and so we just need to keep praying and be aware of, of the times that we're in. That's right, and that's uh, that's what I felt like uh, this last week, early this last week. God was talking to me about how to stand in the coming months, and you know, like I said, I think there's preparation that we can all do that that would be helpful. Um, and God can do miracles. We've got, we've got uh, testimony of that in the Bible. But, you know, we, there's so much going on right now, it's, it would be easy for someone to just feel like just give up. But listen, God always requires us to stand. Scripture after Scripture, he says stand. Just yeah. keep standing, standing firm. And I wanted to go to... Uh, Ephesians 6 first, and I think you were going to mention something about Ephesians 6. Yeah. You want me to wait on that one? No, and, let's do that okay. one next. Uh, I'm just going to start reading in 13. Uh, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. You know, and when you, when you look at that, I, I, I love taking apart every single one of the uh, pieces of the armor. It's like, well, sometimes when you, when you read all that, the one that we, we sometimes the most what would seem insignificant is the most powerful for a, for a Roman soldier, that belt that goes around, you know, for, you know, we think, you know, you know, belt holds up your pants or whatever, but for a Roman soldier that looped around all his armor that held his back plate into place, his front plate, as well as, uh, holding, uh, holding his armaments, Mary, without that belt, if he got into battle, his armor would fall off and he'd be vulnerable. What is the enemy ta- attacking right now more than anything else? Truth. Truth. <laughs> Truth. Takes down all the armor, doesn't it? And so everything, So everything. if you don't have the armor, everything falls off. And guys, if there was ever a time for us to get back into the Word of God, and I think one of the things that has kind of frustrated me 
You know, we uh, we do a lot of uh, cruising on on YouTube, trying to find out you know news reports on Fox News or whatever, as well as to uh, hear different ministries. Mary, we can take any subject, any subject, and and you you and I both have done this. So we can take any subject, and you'll have different prophets and different ministries saying absolutely the opposite to where to where it's almost impossible to try if you're just depending on that impossible to get to the bottom of anything and, and every time i think of that i think of uh the uh protocol of, of learned elders of Zion, not zion Zion, that was illuminati document they said in what one of their plans was going to do and this was back before there was the, this was written before there was radio television you know they were they were going by telegraph back when this was written it shows you how old the document is that they would so overwhelm people with contradictory facts that it would be impossible to discern what's going on. Mm-hmm. And, and just look at, at health. You know, one guy says you need to eat all carnivore. One guy says all carnivore will kill you. One guy says you need to eat all carbs. And all the other guy, uh, we're having the same thing in the body of Christ. And this, this is what is concerning me. We have, anybody can set up a YouTube channel and, and put stuff out. It doesn't mean they have an accurate track record. That's why I like to go back and I, I long to listen to Derek Prince and, and, and many others that had these great track records. But just because you can put up a, a YouTube channel and you may even have a, a good graphics department that can put together some good graphics doesn't mean you've heard from God. Mm-hmm. We, we need to be keenly aware. And this is one of the things that I've told people for decades if you cannot hear God's voice in the voice you're listening to, turn it off. And if all it does is, is tell you what you want to hear. You see, well, there's, there, I'm, I'm reading, I'm now finishing up the, the book on the church in Babylon by Lutzer. Awesome, awesome book. This, this brother really has thought through some issues, bless his heart. And some things that most of the church isn't even, isn't even ready to deal with. But he shares how in, in the, when before God judged Judah, that you had Isaiah and Jeremiah and you had Nehemiah and some others that were prophesying doom is coming. For every one of those, there was a hundred prophets of Baal saying the absolute opposite. And they were saying everything everybody wanted to hear. It's going to be okay. It's, it's going to be a breezy ride. God isn't going to let them do anything. It's going, you know, and, and let me tell you something. I, I think God is going to take us through what we're going to go through. It's by no means going to be an easy ride. But God is faithful. He is. And we and if we're and if we're in him, and I think that's the purpose of what we're talking about today, if we're standing in him, mm-hmm. we're gonna make it. If we're standing in anything else, if we're standing in false words, yeah, given by prophets of Baal. We're we're standing in false hope or we're just closing our eyes and saying, I don't want to look at it, I don't want to look at it, I don't want to look at it. We're gonna be in trouble. The Bible says that a, a wise man can see problems coming from afar off, and he's already preparing. And I, I think we need to do that. And so we, we have to have that. We have to have the truth, not only of God, but truth in what's really going on around us, not some fairy tale. And guys, you're not going to get it on the evening news. It's propaganda anymore. We we are we are living in a time when when Paul wrote. Ephesians chapter 6, he was talking about the principality wars. And this, this is something, we did, did we have a nation that Christianity had greatly influenced at its foundation? Yes. But it has always been under a principality and power. We had enough influence that we were pushing back the things that, we were, that the Apostle Paul said we were wrestling with. We need to understand that fallen immortals control politics they control our culture and boy don't they have it going down the toilet right now i mean it's just it's horrible the things that we're seeing and just the things that are becoming a uh, commonplace that are just horrific that we wouldn't have thought of 10 15 years ago they control education they control business and they control entertainment look what entertainment has done mm-hmm. entertainment back in the beginning like Father's Knows Best and all that, reflected the best concepts that we had of family, reflected the best concepts that we had of society. Now it's reflecting the very worst aspects and glorifying it. Because they had the, there are social engineers in the background that have been turning up the heat 
taking us someplace we don't want to go. And we, and because we didn't realize that, Mary, we couldn't stand firm in who we were. We, we were just like a, a log that was going down the river, not realizing who controlled the river. We thought God controlled mm-hmm. the river. No, these principalities and powers control the river. When we're walking in the kingdom, we're the ones swimming up the river. Yeah, it's, we're for sure going against the flow of things. We, and, you know, it's, it's been a setup. It has. It, it has been such a setup for our kids. I mean, when, when my kids were, were young, you know, you just think, hey, these, these cartoons aren't harmful. It was all a setup. There's, there's just so much that's been done. And, you know, all those little kids that were on, even on the Mickey Mouse Club on, there was such an attack against them, and, and they were being used. And it's just horrible. When, I think when it all comes out, I think we can, when we can see the extent of it all, I, I think there will be many people see the mercy of God. You know, because when in the Old Testament— when God's people get far from him, he'd, he'd let somebody come in and take them over. Yeah, he would. And, that's, and that's the threat that we are in right now, is, is there's a, a big bunch of Chinese that have come in here. They, we've seen it reported over the border. They've got such violence at the border right now that they're rushing the National Guard that's there. You've got illegals posting on how to invade homes that are unoccupied. For squatters' rights. <laughs> and so... Then you look at all the land that China owns. How do we know that they've not already got these people notified? Okay, when you get to America, you head to this place, and we're going to prepare an army there. Now, here's the um, here's the good news. A lot of people think that um, Old Testament nothing to do with the New Testament. Just stick to the New Testament, and the covenant that Jesus paid for is so much better than what the covenant was in the old. You had to have his blood shed for all of us to see the victory we can have. But you know what? God hasn't changed. No. We've changed. Yes. We've systematically got away from his ways. We have. And and it's been a it's been a slow process, but that's that's the way they do. It's like the old frog put in the, the pot of water, and as it boils, and he eventually dies. We, we've allowed Marcionism into our theology that Jesus is different than the God of the Old Testament. Now, when you put everything theologically back into place, Jesus is the God of the Old Testament, okay? He's the creator. I mean, the, the apostolic testimony, he's the one that created Adam. He's the one who parted the Red Sea. He's the one who brought Pharaoh. He's the one who gave all the commandments that most of the church has problems with. It was Jesus that gave them to Moses. And we, we, we see an inkling of, of both his comings in the moment that he creates man. It's, you know, it's Elohim, then it's Yahweh Elohim. And that's literally when you say Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh is the first coming of Christ, the grace of Christ. The second one is the judgment of Christ. We need to realize that when Jesus came in the Gospels, he was showing Yahweh He did not come as Elohim. Okay? So you see half of the character of God. You you see a a wonderful example of how much God loves us and how much God came to redeem us. Jesus said, Now this time I'm this time that I've came, I've not come to judge the world, I've come to redeem the world. But how many know the next time he comes, he's coming to judge Mm -hmm. the world? And so when he comes back, he's going to show the other half of God, which will bring into balance the entire God that we see in the Old Testament. Well, and that's it. And um, I just wanted to go through a few things um, that I thought of as we were, as I was thinking about, you know, when we stand, what God does. And um, some, di- you know, we know with the story of, of Joshua, when they went in the promised land, God said, you go in there and clear this place out. There's sometimes we have to take action. There's other times we just, we stand. Yeah. And so I wanted to read, you know, in Exodus fourteen thirteen. Moses said to the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. They didn't see those people anymore. No, they didn't. There's there's a time coming, and you can you can take this to the bank. There's going to be people that have, have come against God, that have tormented God's people, that have have done atrocities that it's hard for us to even look at. One of these days, 
and it's probably soon. We're going to look around. We're not going to see him anymore because God's getting ready to take care of some of that. Yes, he you is. Know, but he's working on the church right now. He's, try, he's trying to say, can you see how far you got away from my ways? Can you see how, how much you've left? And they've, and they've got you over here in this vulnerable position, and they're planning to come and take you over. And I'm calling to you right now, Remnant, and I'm saying, come on. Get back to my ways. Get back over here. Then guess what? I'm, you're going to stand, and I'm going to do some stuff. Uh, in Second Chronicles 20, 17 through 25, it says, uh, You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And you know we're in a place right now, this is a really good time for us to hit our faces. Yes, it is. And, and fast and pray. And go on, it says, The Levites and the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so ye shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and just say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. Thank God for God's mercy, because it's what's kept us going. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly destroyed slay and destroy them and when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir everyone helped to destroy another so they just all came in there and just wiped each other out I mean God can do anything guys and when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness they looked into the multitude and behold there were dead bodies fallen to the earth and none escaped and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off of themselves um, more than they could carry away and they were three days in gathering the spoil. And let me tell you something. If we can get our act together, if the remnant will rise up and stand and start praising God, start worshiping him in the middle of, of these catastrophic events that are coming, we're going to make it through. Yeah, we are. And he will have a remnant. Um, you know, when I, when I look at even the preparation of the, of the uh, gospel of peace, the shoes that we find in Ephesians 6, Guys, those weren't sandals, as like you and I call it. They, they had spikes on the bottom of them. The preparation of the gospel of peace is the gospel of the kingdom. Now, when a Roman soldier, when they would get in a line and they would, they would, those shields would hook together, it was like a solid wall. And they would advance one step and they would dig in their shoes that had spikes and they had two, they had two different ones. One had like inch and a half or so spikes, but there are other ones that had like four inch spikes, Mary. I mean, they were, when they were really going into battle, because when they, when they dug in, that wall was immovable. And then they would take a, a step forward, dig in, take a step forward and dig in. The problem with, the, with that the enemy has gotten us to do is he has got us walking backwards for so long because we have compromised. We have compromised the word for bigger offerings. We've compromised the word for bigger crowds. We've compromised, mm-hmm. we compromised. This is a season to get back establishing the kingdom. And whenever you take ground, you don't give it up for anything. You don't give it up for anything. You don't compromise with the world. Now, God That's always it. calls us, you know, we need to be word uh, centered in all that we do. Uh, we need to walk in love to other people. You don't love the end, you don't love the devil. I mean, no, you, you give him absolute hell and you give him no ground, okay? Uh, but we also got to refuse to compromise with darkness. And, and, and let's say this year, the enemy's going to say, well, Mike, you've only made 10 steps forward this year. But you know what? I may have made 10 times the steps I've made in the last two or three years. And the reason you're getting in my face is you're getting nervous because I'm making forward movement. Well, that's why people are under such attack. Yeah, they are. It's it's an enormous attack, unlike anything I've seen. Uh, it's the the entities that I've known have been here for almost thirty years working against us. 
they're they're making a move and and when these things come on when you know I think most of the time they sit up they let all the things down here just do their thing I think they've stepped on the scene and that's that's why we're experiencing so much um, just people are under such attack uh, but you know in Jude 24 it says now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy and and part of the key to keep you from falling is you've got to you've got to repent yes you, and I repent every day I, I do. I say, Father, forgive me my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Because it's easy to get a wrong attitude. And and if you're in, you know, the sins that will really uh, mess you up, you know, like the sexual sins and things like that, God's able to deliver you. And I yes. would I would say that to anybody listening. Listen, I'm not condemning anybody. I used to have horrible sin in my life before I got married. Uh, but God showed me a way out of, of something that nobody was supposed to get out of. He made the way for me, um, and he'd make the way for you too. A lot of, a lot of times, um, you know, when we were reading about in Jehoshaphat's army, um, what was one of the keys there? They praised, they worshiped. And when you're in bondage, if you're in, if you're in trapped in sin, if you're in, in some kind of condition and you feel like, hey, I just, I'm not able to serve God the way I want to, um, one of the, th- the keys is to praise him. And you may not feel like praising. I used to be able to worship God. I'd just worship and cry because I was such a mess. But I couldn't praise. I just couldn't hardly get it out of my mouth. And, and what, uh, you know, when I had to dig myself out after God delivered me and then everything came back, um, I had to dig myself out of this mess. And one of the ways I did is even when I I didn't feel like praising, I would make it come out of my mouth. I didn't even care if it sounded like praise. I would say, I praise you, Almighty God, because you are all powerful. You are almighty. You are worthy of all praise. And and if you're in bondage and feel like you can't praise, just make it come out of your mouth and continue to do that. And pretty soon, the Spirit's going to ha- gonna grab a hold of that, and you're going to be able to praise, and you're going to be able to worship. And it it's a huge part of your weaponry, your spiritual weaponry. Yeah. What you were saying that I was thinking of a brother over in Germany. And, uh, you know, in, in church over there, we used to get pretty loud, but he always sang just super, super soft. You almost couldn't even stand next to him. And one day he was way out in the field, and he was making the most awful noise. I bet you there were dogs howling for <laughs> for a half a mile. And uh, I had walked out. It was the we we had exercise out there, and there was a helipad in the middle of it on on the military concern. And I walked out there, and and he looked up, and I, there was tears rolling down his face. And he, I said, "What on earth were you doing?" He said, "I was praising," but he said, "I can't carry a tune." And he said, "It seems to hurt people when I do, but only God can take it." So I get out here in the field by myself. Well, bless his heart, he was giving it the old one too. He he was, and and he was he was walking in some victory. God had delivered him from some things, but I mean, yeah, he couldn't even find the same octave everybody was 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 trying to sing in, and and so you know sometimes you you may need to be a field praiser. You may need to get out by yourself. Well, it's, it's but it, it, heaven, heaven hears. Yes, heaven my hears. goodness. And you know, um, I God's told me some ways that He is going to miraculously provide for His people, and I'm not going to share them because I learned in my, you know, in these last years, I've made mistakes by saying things that God had told me He had a plan for, and He didn't tell me to tell anybody. But I would say it, and then the enemy heard it because there are things that hover, and there's a lot of satanic surveillance. And so Satan comes in when you say those things that, that God reveals for you a secret plan that he wants you to pray about. And then the enemy hears it, and he says, well, I can stop that, and he just goes to work. And, you know, it delays things a lot of times. And so I'm not going to say what God's told me, but just... Um, there are things that would bring you great comfort, and I wanted to go back to miracle provision. Uh, in First Kings seventeen one through six, uh, you know Elijah was—he's um, the one that fought the Jezebel spirit, and that spirit is one of the principalities over America. It's trying to destroy marriages. It's trying to—you know—its main goal, I think, is to keep us from God. Uh, it's a manipulating spirit. It's just, it's a horrible spirit, and it's at work. And so um, 
this was when Elijah was out. Uh, I'll just read it. It says, 1 Kings 17, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, Before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Sherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Sherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. So God can miraculously bring you things. I mean, I, you know, ravens are used a lot by the occult, and, and maybe it's because they were so angry, got so angry at those ravens being used by God. Um, but, you know, those are God's birds. He created them. Um, but even, I mean, and you talk about Elijah being up against it. You know, Ahab, Jezebel, I mean, they were they were ruling everything. And... Uh, but God, God took him, and yeah. and and they. Can you imagine how mad they were when he said, "Hey, the heavens are going to shut up. You ain't going to get any rain until I, until I say." Uh, and so you know how they were determined to kill him, and so. But God took him to a place and and made made provision for him, and God can still do that. You know, He expects us. Um, you know, as in Joseph's day, they, they had to prepare. There was a, a famine coming. And, and there can be famines today. It says in the end times there will be famines. So God expects us to make preparations, and we, we seek him and find out what he wants us to do. Uh, but if, if he has to, he'll, he'll give us water and food. He will. And, you know, back at the beginning of the, uh, the charismatic movement, you know, long before we, when we first got married, if you went into my car and you turned on the ignition, there was already a cassette tape playing, and you're glory to God about the same time the car started because I always had one one playing. And there were, and the, what made me think of that? We were listening to a testimony of, of some guy that was over in Europe, and and uh, money was scarce, and God had told him to do some things, and his car ran two years without him ever having to put gas in it. And I remember this one preacher, and I, they do, I think he worked with Bob Mumford, if I remember his story right, but. God had told him he was to start not in ministry, and he was a ball of fire. And he gets, and there's tires called might pop tires. That's when they might pop at any minute because you've been driving on them so long. And he gets to gets this church, and, and, the, and one of the guys in the church is a mechanic, and he says, you know, God's told me to fix up your car. And he goes out and it won't even start. He has to have it towed to his thing. And he takes it apart, and he, and he says, brother, how did you get here? And he said, I drove. And he said, you don't even have points in your car. They're gone. They're wore out. And he said, your tires are so bald, I could almost see the air in them. And, and, and he said, how far did you drive? 400 miles. When, whenever we're on assignment for God, this is, this is a part, of, I think, of what we, we forget, is when we're on assignment for God, God takes care of his own, and he, he does supernatural things mm-hmm. to do this. Mm-hmm. And, and he can make food stretch further. He can show you the, and if you're, if you're wanting to stock up some things, he can show you the best deals if, if we just right. take time to pray. Yeah. And what, what I have found out about God, and um, this is some things that I'm working on right now and kind of thinking through, when, when the angel said that God was holy, that in fact is brought to the superlative, he's holy, holy, holy. In, in the Hebrew, what that means is not only that he's holy, but he's the absolute other. And, you know, if, if God didn't reveal to us in his word who he is and how he thinks, we could even figure him out, okay? His, his ways are not our ways. And I, I marvel at the grace of God. God always consistently, he gives us his word, and he deals with us the same way every time so that we can get it. One of, the, one of the powerful things about Moses and why he was able to do what he did, the Bible says that while Israel saw the miracles of God, Moses understood the ways of God. Mm-hmm. And so his, his ways are constant for us so that we can get it. He always used this, he uses the same uh, symbolism. He uses the same thing, you know, just, just so that we can get it. And he has this Holy Spirit trying to bring our attention to it. But Mary, I want to kind of tie into what you were talking about, like this 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 bridge they call it a, a black swan event. Mm-hmm. 
when we follow God and the enemy comes after us, we can become black swan events for the enemy. Because even though God always deals with us the same way, he never does the enemy. The enemy never sees it coming because the enemy can't figure God out. And he, he sent a shepherd down with a shepherd's staff and brought a nation to its knees and freed his people. And he tells them to go take the land. Then he tells them, okay, this time I don't want you to fight. I want you to praise in the midst of this. And then the next time he doesn't have them do anything, he sends an angel down there and takes care of Sennacherib. In every situation, God can hit the enemy where he least expects it, and he never sees it coming. Yeah. And so we serve a God that, as far as the enemy is concerned, is absolutely stealth. The Bible says that if they would have known that Jesus was going to resurrect from the dead, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They thought they won at the cross. And so, you know, the, we, we think of, of all, all, all the gates of hell being down in hell. They're actually up in the second heaven, okay? Why were they all assembled in the lower parts of shield after Jesus died? Why were they assembled down there? They all, they all left their thrones in the second heaven. They went down to the lower part of Sheol where Jesus was supposed to be taken captive so they could gloat over him. And he walks in there and says, now that you're all together, I got you all here in one place at one time because I'm going to whip your rear ends from one end of hell to the other. And I'm going to take your leader and I'm going to make an open show of him. And when I get out of here, I'm taking the keys of death, hell, and the grave to me. Can, can you see this? that they were expecting to gloat over him. We had one. He emptied out the second heaven, got them all in one place at one time, and then wiped the floor with them. They didn't see it coming. God is able, no matter what the circumstances look like. You could have your, you could have in front of you a Red Sea, and to the back of you the Pharaoh that's going to slaughter you, and he'll part the Red Sea, take you across, and drown the Pharaoh's enemy. He can cause the enemy to get into such confusion they kill each other. Now he's done it before. He's done it before. That's those are the ways of God that we can see and we can have hope. Well, have you ever seen one of those movies? I can't remember that one we watched about the. It, they took AI and they set these people up, and they were going to have uh, oh this horrible event happen. And oh, it was on Hudson and Rex. No, no it, not that it's one. an it's an old movie that. And what they did is everywhere they went, whether it was an electric line that they they put a charge over and it broke and killed somebody. I mean, it was everywhere these people went. The AI could see them. Oh, Eagle Eye. That's that the was it. Uh, and so. It, I mean, it reminded me, it made me nervous to watch that movie, and I wanted to see it because I wanted to see what they did, but um, it, it made me nervous because it made me think about what I knew years ago and, and how they make it look like there's no escape. There's absolutely nothing that can protect you against their, their, uh, you know, their surveillance, their satellites, I, everything to where they can watch your every move and, and use, use people all around you. And they were, they were coercing people in that movie. Like they'd call somebody on the cell phone and say, hand, you hand them this phone uh, or something bad's going to happen to you. And it was just horrible how they did this thing, much like what they try to do today. Yeah. But, but let me tell you something. God can put you in a, a particular place, or I don't want to say this one word that he told me because I'm trying not to reveal too much, but, but there, there is a hidden place that God can put you that it wouldn't matter what they did, they couldn't find you. And this is going to be important for the days ahead because AI is the operating system mm -hmm. for the beast system. And it is, it is their way of creating omniscience, okay, so that they know everything, they're everywhere at one time. Let me tell you something. God can, uh, can block you from surveillance. I remember there was, a, I can't remember the prophet's name, but God had him on assignment where he was like walking across America and he got him to do some, several things. And he said it was like all of a sudden he became, and him and his partner that was with him became just really aware of heaven around them. And what they didn't know is there were people that were following them. There was another set of them that appeared that went one way when they were going the other, and everybody was blind to their movements. 
Well, I, I'm telling you, God can do stuff that you yeah. can't believe. I, one of the times in 2005 when all those people were coming after me, I was on Interstate 44. And I just happened to look up, and I knew that they that different people were following me and stuff. And I looked up, and, and there were two semis just got side by side. Now, they were probably getting cussed at and honked at and everything else, but they stayed side by side, and I left them miles and miles behind me. They blocked that traffic. Now, you know that was angelic interaction or something, but I got I, I didn't see another vehicle anywhere behind me, and then I got off on my exit and just went on, and I thought, now, that had to be God. Well, that was somebody. the time that people were following us and harassing us on the highways and all that Oh, that, that was that weekend when it was just awful. But um, I'm, I'm just telling you, I've experienced it, and I know that it's possible. You don't have to fear. No. And, and when you don't fear, when you, when you get past that, it's easy to stand still. You know, right now, we're in a situation the a difference in the old testament is god would just say you go and wipe these people out we can't do that now but i can tell you we are to stand against the evil we are to vocalize what god's word says and how evil this is we are yes. to not be quiet we are to we are to stand and then follow god's instruction he may tell us to go someplace and pray he may but but that's the standing that we do right now and that's what i feel like god's god's saying you know there's already judgment released against the united states a lot of people wouldn't want to hear that but listen you can't have this much innocent bloodshed and there not be judgment headed yeah. for you and you know what i what i believe is that there are thousands upon thousands of john the baptist that have been hidden in the wilderness. Yeah, he's hidden. Now, they have been yep. faithful in their assignments, and it may be, they may have been pastoring 10, 15 people for 15, 20 years. And they, they've been back there. They've been maturing. Mm -hmm. They have been learning how to hear God. They have learned how to get the flesh and ego and all these things out of the way so that when God releases them, it's going to be a pure word, and it's going to be exactly what God wants them to do. And imagine... 10,000 with doing prophetic warfare all around the world. Mm -hmm. The enemy doesn't see it coming, but as they speak, heaven begins to move. We, what we see in the book of Acts is, is real warfare because the enemy was going to try to stamp out the church in its infancy. But in that conflict, you begin seeing miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. It's in the conflict that you see the miracle. Now, when, when things are going and the, 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 the conflict is not a visible conflict, but is, is very tacit in the background, you're not going to see those miracles. It's when it becomes towards not just, you know, good old boys planning behind closed doors to do things in secret. But it, when, it, when it comes to the forefront, like what we're seeing today, is the time that God begins moving in miracles because that's that's now the nature of the warfare, and so I you know I encourage you guys read the book of Acts, and 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 just let it let it encourage you. I mean they 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 killed the apostle Paul out, outside of Iconium. They gathered around him and prayed, and he was back the next day preaching again. Can you imagine? Didn't we stone you to death yesterday? Satan couldn't take him out until it was his time. And one of the things that, that in, in you know, yes, yes, you know, the, uh, he did give his life at the end, but he penned Second Timothy the night before he was to be executed for his testimony for Christ. And he said, I've run the race. I've finished the fight. I've got it all done. I've got it all done. Before then, the enemy couldn't stop him. They, they took him to Rome because he says, I have a right to stand... Uh, before Caesar as a Roman citizen. And one of the things, and sometimes sometimes in the, the small things are sometimes the most powerful, he's writing to them, he's, he's up in Rome, he's writing to them and he tells the saints, there are those of the household of Caesar that greet you. He went up there and the gospel started infiltrating the very house of Caesar. Imagine that for a minute. Imagine that for a minute. That's, that's ground zero. Mm -hmm. Whether they were servants or family members of Caesar, they were getting one to the Lord because 
He was unstoppable in his assignment. He was unstoppable. Today, you and I are blessed because we can open up the Word of God and find the writings of the Apostle Paul to this day in the Word of God Mm -hmm. because he was serious about his assignment. That's right. And when we start taking our assignment seriously, you say, Mike, I don't know what my assignment is. Well, you can start by praying, praying for the nation and praying for others. And it, it will always evolve out of that. Every one of us, that's, the Bible tells us to, to pray without ceasing and, and to seek the things of God. And as, as we're, if we're faithful in these things, the other things will develop. It, it may be to show love. It, uh, one of the things, and, and I've you know, been reading Letzer's book on, on these people up in, in a, a, a Moody Church, of just reaching out and, and helping children that uh, that really don't have any parents, that don't that are might as well be orphaned, there, and they'll end up in gangs and stuff. Marion, instead, they're going to college and they're becoming attorneys and doctors, and many of them going into ministry because these people said, "I'm going to love you, and I'm going to be there for you." Maybe your mom and dad are strung out on drugs, but I'm going to be there for you, and I'm going to love you. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to make sure that you know that someone cares about you. Isn't that the gospel in motion? Mm-hmm. We always think about the pulpit, but let me tell you something. 5% of ministry happens in the pulpit. 5%. The rest of it is how we live our lives before God. And with, you want, you want to take America back? You got to do it one soul at a time. One soul at a time. Make a difference. Win them to Christ. Teach them the ways of God. And then they win another soul. Then they win another soul. That's it. And they win another soul. And what became a trickle becomes a tsunami against the enemy. Well, you know, Satan knows that God sees everything. He knows that. And so I think one of his greatest ploys has been to use his people, people in the occult, to do rituals and sacrifices, spill innocent blood so they can build power to form cloaks. That was going on in that town I was raised. The the witches were using a cloaking so they couldn't find the drugs that were coming through. They were were all along the line, up through I-44, up through those little towns that they would go the back ways on semis full of drugs so that they couldn't find it. Um, So... When you start asking God to forgive the sins in your area, that's the one thing that breaks the cloaking. Oh, because yeah. you ask God to forgive those sins, it doesn't absolve them, obviously, of their need for, for repentance. It breaks the power. It breaks the power to cloak. Yeah. And when we started praying that, man, did the drugs start being found. And, we, and you, God showed you that. Long before we had, you know, some people come through that have actually worked for three-letter agencies that were going after drugs and stuff, and we found out that, especially those coming up like through Mexico and all that, that there there are shamans that are what you would call a world-class shaman that is is paid millions of dollars by the drug cartels to cloak Mm -hmm. their shipments. So as we continue to just ask forgiveness for prayers, what God's done is is said, okay. You do this, I'm exposing it all. Here it is. Now, remnant, rise up and stand against it. Okay, you may have not known that there was all of these atrocities going on. You may not have known about human trafficking. You may not have known that there were little children, that that things that you can't even discuss in public are being done. But I'm going to expose it. And now now that you know you're responsible for that knowledge, and I am requiring you to stand Stand up and say, not on my watch. Yeah. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's right. And I don't care how many demons are behind it. I don't care how much, uh, you know, what all the powerful people that are behind this. God could stop them in one day. One day. Like in Egypt, you could be looking for them and you'll see them no more. Yeah. We're getting ready to walk in time of miracles. God wants you to be so entrenched into the kingdom, Satan can't get you to move an inch. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something, a man who refuses to be moved because he's solid in God, the enemy is going to end up finding out. 
He's a brick wall in the kingdom. And let's just be praying for that that anointing that I see is on the way. That maybe these people you're saying have been in the back that God's hidden. Maybe they're going to walk in someplace and people are so overcome by the presence of the Lord with them yes. that they'll fall on their knees. That's what we need in this nation. Yeah, they've spent 10, 15 years just honing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just honing that relationship with God. And yes. they know the word backwards and forwards, and they know the voice of God, and they can recognize his voice. In the middle of the den of warfare, mm-hmm. they'll recognize the voice of God and That's say, right. this is what we're supposed to do. That's right. Well, Father, we thank you that the enemy, when it comes to warfare, the enemy doesn't have a chance against you, doesn't have a chance. And Father, you have been calling us into the kingdom for such a time as this. Father, we ask that on the remnant you would release an anointing, Father, to get us where we're supposed to be. If the enemy has got us off, Father, we ask that you would correct us. That if there's an adjustment that we need to do, if we have allowed uh, the siren song of Babylon that's on many even Christian channels that have affected our theology, bring us back to the Word. Yes. Bring us back to your commandments. Bring us back to your ways. Yes, help us, Father. It's all about Jesus. It's all about his kingdom. It's all about his purposes in the earth. And you have given us the privilege of being a part of it. What a glorious thing, Father. Father, where, the, where we have weakness, Father, bring strength. Father, where we have doubt, let faith rise up like never before. Father, let your gifts of the Holy Spirit go into operation. Let the fruit of the Spirit, which is the character of Christ, be established in every part of us. And let there be a fresh anointing upon your remnant, Father, to stand in this evil day. Because you have told us a long time ago that we could do it. If they could do it then, we can do it now, Father God. And we claim it for this generation. And we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.